This is 7 News, the voice of the New England. Tonight, Tamworth ratepayers will fork out more money as Tamworth Regional Council seeks a rate rise. And a thunderstorm warning in place across parts of the region tonight. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news hour, Brittany Higgins breaks down on the stand. The explosive claims in the Lerriman defamation case and the Aussie hero that's behind India's miraculous mine rescue. 7 News begins now. Good evening. After months of community consultation and over 800 submissions from ratepayers, Tamworth Regional Council will seek a rate rise from the Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal. Council wants a 36.3% rate rise over the next two years, with residents paying just over 18% in 2024. Olivia Babb is in Tamworth for us tonight. And Olivia, how are residents feeling? Nick, many are concerned and angry with last night's decision. Despite two councillors speaking out against it, the IPART application was accepted and now it's just a waiting game for the community. The rate rise of 36.3% over the next two years has been given the green light by Tamworth Regional Council. They'll send the application to the Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal for consideration. The decisions that we may make might be very unpopular with the information that is given to us, we have to make a decision uh, that is a responsible decision for the long-term benefit of the wider community. Councillors Steve Mears and Mark Rodder stood against the others, questioning whether a special rate rise was appropriate at this time. They were met with applause from the crowd. Look, I think all of those people that were there last night were pretty much going to be opposed to it. Despite the 800 submissions and 97% against the rise, it was voted in favour. IPART will read all the submissions and decide whether to approve the rise, decline or offer a lower rate. David McKinnon from Tamworth Ratepayers Association doesn't believe IPART will approve it. Of course, they've already given it to them. I mean, the idea that they can turn around and slap another one on in a couple of months' time, it seems ridiculous. So we'll be fighting it to the, to the end. Ratepayers have already been hit with 13 interest rate increases by the RBA since May last year. The added cost of rates could put mounting pressure on local residents already doing it tough. Anything that's a stress is, is, ends up being a mental health problem. But more than that, I mean, their 100,000 um, blueprint will be down the drain because people will come and realise how expensive it is living here. A decision is expected to be made by May 2024. Olivia Babb, 7 News. Liverpool Plains Shire Council is looking at ways to transform an unused TAFE building into social and affordable housing. It comes as the town struggles with a lack of available homes, deterring people from moving to Corindai. This block of empty concrete has been gathering dust for the past eight years, while Corindai struggles with a lack of affordable and social homes. We're desperate for affordable housing, we're desperate for emergency accommodation, and this site would, would fit that. The old Corindai TAFE campus has been sitting dormant after a smaller campus was built only minutes away. A golden opportunity, empty rooms with plumbing and electricity already in place. It's a perfect spot. You're close to the main centre of town, you're close to the daycare centre um, and all the, all the benefits that we've got. TAFE still owns the building and Mayor Doug Hawkins seized his chance last Friday requesting a meeting with New South Wales TAFE Minister Steve Wan. In a statement to Seven News, Minister Wan says the government is committed to improving access to housing and will continue to engage the council throughout the process. And we had an immediate response. We had an email from his secretary on our way home in the car. One agency real estate claims most properties are being snapped up in no longer than two weeks, estimating 85% of clients aren't local residents. Increased housing supply is crucial as council aims to bring more professionals to town. We can't just wait until that happens and, and 150 workers turn up on your doorstep and, and you've got no accommodation for them to go to. The meeting between Mayor Doug Hawkins and TAFE Minister Steve Wan isn't expected to happen until early next year. Liverpool Plains Shire Council hopes it's a step in the right direction to solve the region's housing crisis. Rex Quayle, 7 News.
Well, as the festive season creeps closer, deliveries across the region are ramping up. But for delivery drivers, it can be a dangerous game, with dog attacks towards posties rising at an alarming rate. The convenience of delivery is a privilege people are used to, but it doesn't come without its risks to delivery drivers. Most of the time the dogs are inside or uh, behind the fence. Australia Post is reporting more than 50 workers a week are involved in an accident with a dog. Tamworth has had one of the highest numbers of dog attacks towards posties. Uh, we always have that concern that if the dog jumps off the fence. Christmas is just around the corner and deliveries are ramping up. It's not just Australia Post parcels coming to front doors, but takeaway meals. Drivers are having to be cautious when nearing a home with a dog. Uh, sometimes, if that's the case, I will just put the uh, food in the fence. Australia Post told Seven News in a statement that their team's safety comes first. If the posties are unable to approach a home, then they won't be able to deliver. Drivers are urging households to secure their dogs and put up a warning sign outside their home. So definitely keep the dogs away when we are uh, reaching for the delivery. Olivia Babb, Seven News. A severe thunderstorm warning is in place across the northwest slopes and plains and the northern tablelands. Rex Quayle is in Tamworth for us tonight. And Rex, how is the weather looking there now? Well, Maddie, it's calmed down now, but pockets of the region did experience some isolated heavy rainfall this afternoon. There could be some more downpours tonight. Uh, so the SES is urging all residents to stay under cover and not drive through flood waters. Households are also encouraged to lock up any loose furniture or any materials, t materials near their homes, which could cause some damage. And remember, to stay up to date with all the latest warnings, you can do that on the Hazards Near Me app. Good advice. Thanks for the update, Rex. That's Rex Quayle reporting there in Tamworth for us tonight. Now, let's stay on all things weather and check in with Kirsty today. And Kirsty, rain around, storms expected. There's a whole lot going on. Yeah, there sure is, Maddie Nick. Good evening to you both. And hello, everyone. We woke to cloudy but dry skies this morning across the northern inland. A very windy morning, too. Gusty winds about 45 kilometres an hour in Tamworth. Some showers to start to move through the west around 9am with storms in Walgett. That unsettled weather migrating east, reaching the likes of Narrabri and Bogabri around 12.30 with widespread storms and as we heard with Rex, those quick and isolated heavy downpours. That severe storm warning covering the entire northern tablelands was issued at 5 o'clock this afternoon for that heavy rain, damaging winds and large hail. Showers are forecast to ease overnight, though certainly clearing for our final day of spring tomorrow. I'll have a look at what's in store for our Thursday forecast of the Love to Sport, guys. Sounds good, thanks, Kirsty, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. The New South Wales Government will fast track the build of low to medium houses across parts of the state, but the region is missing out. Experts say the housing crisis in some areas would benefit from more homes, but at a smaller size. Tamworth is in the middle of an industry boom, but the housing market is struggling to keep up with demand. It's the lifestyle, so the lock and leave, and sometimes it's not even the younger, it's the retirees that want the lock and leave that are based here in Tamworth but travel. Low and mid-rise homes are hot property across the state, including the bush. For professionals, we do not have enough um, housing options for people. Too many cottages um, and not enough um, unit villa style accommodation. The state government has announced a housing reform to fast track those exact types of homes. Unfortunately, it's for the Greater Sydney, Central Coast, Illawarra and Hunter regions. We've still got a way to go in regional areas for people accepting that we need to look at different housing options. Low and mid-rise homes appeals to investors and first home buyers. The price point would be around $480,000 to $550,000. That sweet spot of that market is quite demanding at the moment, so if we had a lot more of those properties, we'd certainly be moving those on. Much more affordable. We need to be building affordable housing as well. And low to mid-rise will be more affordable accommodation for people. Opening up more land for developers could see the boost the region needs. At this point in time, when we've got a low supply of housing, any housing is um, valuable to a developer. Olivia Babb, 7 News.
Last night's Tamworth Regional Council meeting featured some contentious issues. One of them was a review of traffic impacts associated with road access from Arcadia Estate to Rodeo Drive, something residents feel strongly about. Another decisive topic was discussed during Tamworth Regional Council's meeting last night, connecting Rodeo Drive to Arcadia Estate. We had probably half of our audience was, that, was there for another matter, which was Rodeo Drive. Uh, and they were interested in the conversations that were going to be held. <laughs> Rodeo Drive locals were vocal over their stance, saying safety was their primary concern. But despite their views against it, Tamworth Regional Council voted for it. But all residents were concerned for their safety, as there has already been incidents involving traffic and extra traffic would only increase the problem. Locals claim a lack of footpaths and street lights will make it dangerous for pedestrians to travel along the road. If residents walk from house to house, which is a normal practice, they have no option but to walk on the road. However, council claim they've considered their concerns with a list of recommendations that could be installed on Rodeo Drive to make it safer. So council moved last night a recommendation to do certain things to make sure that if that road is opened up and when it's opened up, uh, it will ha have some uh, work done on it to make it uh, safe. And two recommendations include a footpath and a cycleway. It was quite clear last night in the recommendation that the footpath and cycleway would be in the road reserve of Rodeo Drive. Hugh Pearson, 7 News. Accessing contraception will now be easier than ever before. Women aged 18 to 35 who have been prescribed the pill in the last two years can now renew their scripts over the counter at the pharmacy. Under the New South Wales Government program, resupplies will also be issued for free. Priceline pharmacy owner Amanda Ward says not only will the new program free up GP waiting rooms, it will also help women stay up to date with their contraception. Rather than waiting six weeks and having a lapse in treatment, they can walk into the pharmacies where the pharmacists have done the adequate training and then get that resupply for up to 12 months before they have to see their doctor again. The Priceline Pharmacy is one of 1,000 pharmacies right across New South Wales who are participating in the program. Still to come in seven years, Corindai's silos will soon be surrounded by sunflowers. And free Japanese encephalitis vaccinations now available for people in the region. And a little later on, this news hour, an apology to the victims of thalidomide, more than half a century after the drug devastated families. Brittany Higgins takes the stand, giving evidence at Bruce Lerriman's defamation trial. And the Aussie, who played a critical role in the rescue of 41 minors. Welcome back. The state government has expanded access to free Japanese encephalitis vaccines for people across parts of the region. The decision was made after health and environmental experts carefully considered surveillance data from the past two mosquito seasons. The New South Wales government will vaccinate more people in the state's north for Japanese encephalitis after two recent rain-soaked mosquito seasons. This is Gunnada, Guida, Inverell, Liverpool Plains, Tamworth and Tenterfield and Upper Hunter LGAs. The free vaccine is available for people two months or older who live in an LGA with an identified risk. But to be eligible, you need to regularly spend time outside, placing you at risk of mosquito bites. You will also be eligible if you have living conditions with limited mosquito protection or are engaging in prolonged outdoor flood recovery. They spend time outdoors, they're experiencing homelessness. They are living in conditions where they can't have effective mosquito control measures in place, for example, fly screens and et cetera. While the option is there to get vaccinated, local GPs say if you're indoors most of the time, you shouldn't worry. A very small proportion, less than 1% of people have fever, headache, and sometimes some concerning brain swelling, if you like. Treatment is available if you contract the virus and have symptoms. The diagnosis of Japanese encephalitis virus will be made at a hospital because it, like a number of viruses that affect us here, um, are reasonably rare in their occurrence. The best treatment for the virus is prevention. The most important thing is protect yourself from being bitten. We can all do that. Wearing long sleeve clothing, using insect repellent. Hugh Pearson, 7 News. 
The Corindai solo art will look even prettier in just a few months' time as a number of sunflower seeds have been planted at its base. Organisers say the flower represents good fortune and positive opportunities. The sunflowers will finish growing in between 80 and 120 days' time. Anyone passing by is encouraged to stop and take a look. Still to come in 7 News, more sporting clubs are relying heavily on council funding to stay afloat. And a taekwondo expert has arrived home from a tournament in Japan. Tomorrow on Sunrise, the Aussie suburbs bucking the rental increases. The most affordable houses leasing for less than $500 a week. Plus, the Beverly Hills Cop is back. Eddie Murphy's big new surprise, 30 years in the making. See you in the morning. Taekwondo has taken Paul Holden from a small gym in Manila all the way to Japan. Now he's looking to pass his skills on to the next generation. He's the Manila martial arts expert breaking new ground. <laughs> Paul Holden has just returned from representing his country at the World Martial Arts Championships in Japan. The Taekwondo black belt bringing back a few souvenirs. The tournament was definitely the hardest I've ever faced. But it was an opportunity that almost didn't happen. Paul first took up the sport as a teenager, but walked away for over 20 years. I've achieved my black belt again and started on a tournament circuit in Australia, which, which really spurred me on to competing overseas. Now, Paul is hoping to pass on his skills to the next generation. He coaches at a local dojang in town, but he's looking to teach them more than just patterns. Foremost, their self-confidence um, and their determination, their discipline, and then the fitness and the, the Taekwondo come second to that. Paul is encouraging anyone to come and try Taekwondo. He believes people of all ages can benefit from the sport. It's the experience that they'll carry through into their later life that, that I'm trying to give them. Um, you know, it's definitely the sport's given that to me, so, yeah, you know, it's just my bit giving back to them. Max Gent, yep. 7 News. The Tamworth Regional Council has copped a little bit of criticism for funding a number of multi-million dollar sporting projects, but without the help, a number of events, clubs and facilities simply would struggle to survive. Sport and politics, two things that don't mix. But at most council meetings, that topic is front of mind. Fee waivers and subsidies are regularly given to local clubs and sporting events to help them stay afloat. We support those sporting bodies because we want to have a fit and healthy community. But it provides a catch-22 for residents who are forced to fund these clubs with rates set to skyrocket. If we're not going to subsidise those facilities the way we do at the moment, which is using ratepayers' money, uh, then those kids, most of them, probably won't be able to afford to play sport. The funding given has allowed Tamworth's facilities and programs to thrive. One of which is the Northern Inland Academy of Sport. The council helping them out in a number of different ways. Providing facility hire uh, or discounting facility hire, providing the facility where we work from in Peel Street. Um, so we're very appreciative of the support that Tamworth Regional Council has um, provided us over many, many years. Last night, NIAS asked for funds to help host the Academy Games. Council gave them the green light, providing more than $28,000 to the Academy. A huge event, bringing thousands into the town potentially injecting $2 million into the local economy. It's injection of um, people and their finances into that community. Whilst these organisations need the funds to survive, some are questioning where you draw the line. The budget for the Trelaw Park redevelopment has blown out and a new $45 million aquatic centre is on its way. All of those sporting events that we're talking about that bring huge benefit to our region, huge benefit to the businesses in our region, but also a huge benefit to the people within our region, they will go somewhere else. They'll go where there's better sporting facilities if we don't maintain what we've got. Max Gent, 7 News. Up next in 7 News, will we see more rain over the next couple of days? Kirsty has all the answers in just a couple of minutes. That's next on 7 News. 
Good evening, everyone. Well, wet weather has lashed parts of the state today, including those of us in the northern inland, with some significant rain and storms also through the southeast. We did see those severe storms contracting towards eastern parts of New South Wales today. Conditions do look to ease into tomorrow as these systems move offshore, but we are still expecting some scattered rainfall arriving for the end of spring, as well as the chance of thunderstorm outbreaks. Similar conditions through our weekend. We aren't expecting clearer skies until early early next week. Now, most of our region's heavy rainfall has already fallen, but we do still have that risk of severe storms on the forecast, which could drop localised heavy rainfall showers as well as damaging winds. And tonight, warnings do remain in place right across the northern tablelands, as well as north and south western pockets of the slopes and plains. That's for damaging winds, large hail and parts of heavy rainfall. That risk should ease overnight, though, meaning our Thursday weather can expect to be mostly sunny on the ground with some gusty winds around reaching up to 30 kilometres an hour. Warm temperatures, the high 20s into the 30s. In fact, that combination of the warm temperatures as well as the gusty conditions will see a high fire danger rating return to the northwest region as well as the Northern Slopes Fire District. 25 for Armadale and 28 for Inverell. We will cook off our Friday and the start of December with some more gusty conditions as well as the chance of evening showers returning. There is about a 70% chance of one to two millimetres in the northern uh, in the northern region. Thunderstorms also likely for some of us. Gleninus reaching a top of 25 and Tenterfield reaching a top of 27 degrees. We will see similar conditions on Saturday with that mostly fine morning, a little cloud cover here and there and those temperatures remaining mild. The high 20s for Korea and for Tamworth. The chance of late storms and a medium chance of a late shower or two developing. The Barrington Tops a top of 19 degrees, 24 for Armadale and 22 degrees in Walker. If we take a look now to the next seven days into early next week, we certainly are expecting much more summer-like conditions. Temperatures warming up slightly, 37 possibly on the way for Wednesday and we can see those skies drying out. The storm activity very typical for this season, for spring and certainly this time of year. Nice to see a little bit of a reprieve though, but we are watching with those severe storm warnings remaining in place this evening. Guys. Yes, that's right. We'll keep an eye on those, Kirsty. Thank you very much. And that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on our website or of course at 7 plus. Right now, Dan's got your national news. Enjoy your night. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock.